Hi, we're in the book of Revelations of St. John the Divine, chapter 13, verses 1 through 18. The first verse reads, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power in his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered at the, the beast, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God and to blaspheme his name in his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And I was given unto him, let me read that again, verse 13, chapter 13, the book of Revelation, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all the kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth in captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patient in the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused and caused it the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that 
he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceited them that dwell upon, I'll read it again. This is chapter 13, verses 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Mm -hmm. And he calleth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of of his name. Here's the wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. That covers verses 1 through 18. So we just read through 1 through 18 from chapter 13 of the book of Revelation of St. John Divine in the King James Version. So it did sound probably a little funny. So what I'm going to do is say it in modern so you can go over it in the King James, which you, you should do anyway. Also, you should look at the uh, 1611. The words are a little, uh, letters are a little different, but you can interpret it just like, you know, you interpret people that talk, speak English, but don't, but some don't speak it the same way you do, but, and some don't speak it standard English. So you still can uh, interpret or discern uh, what they're saying. So we, in verse one, chapter um 13 of the book of Revelation of St. John Divine in the King James Version. So, like I said, I'll go through it and uh, we'll cover and demystify um, and clarify it as much as we can in this chapter. Verse 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw, John is talking, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Now the beast is rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads, upon his heads, it said, the name of blasphemy. So we know blasphemy means speaking, injurious, injurious speaking. That means that you're saying things like people would say about speak against you in a similar way. Well, it's talking against the Son of God. It's talking against it's talking against Jesus. It's talking against him. And you know, our holy God, our Lord God will always be talked against when it comes to the Antichrist. When it comes to the devil, Satan, aka, or the old serpent, he will always use talk against 
and he used all his minions and imps and demonic spirits and beasts to talk against Jesus Christ. So you can see that in the first um, part of this verse is uh, is referring to the rise in the power figure. Mm -hmm. You can see all of this going on. Who will have great authority? They call it in the end times. And so, when we mean by the end times, the period in future in the in the future time will come to the end. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so he knows he has a short time, so he has to pronounce himself more and his imps and his beasts and everybody else and his false prophets. So, like I said, it's, it's the act of speaking blasphemy. It's the act of speaking in a way that is harmful or offensive to our God. Let's go to verse uh, two. In the beast, remember the beast is not those four beasts that we read about earlier. No, those are lords. They are called living creatures in the interpretation of the uh, transliteration of the Greek. Uh, this beast is a wild animal. It's considered in the transliteration of the Greek a wild animal. Which had which which I saw, that's what John said, was like unto a leopard. And it's strange how this thing is made up. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. You know, bears don't have feet, they have paws or whatever. And but you know, he's not a zoologist. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. You can imagine how that looked with those canines and everything else up there. Pretty strange looking animal, wild animal. And the dragon gave him, gave this wild animal, this beast, as they say in the King James Version, him his power, Satan, the old serpent, gave him his power in his seat. And great authority, Midas in the Greek, great authority, great ability, great. And so it's, it's, this is definitely referring to, now they call it, if you, for you scholars, the word wild animal, the Greek transliteration is, says, sherion, sherion. And it means wild, a wild animal. And so is this is refer, referring to a uh, dangerous and a destructive creature or beast, or we call it a wild animal in the, in the uh, Greek transliteration. Let's go to verse uh, 3 of chapter 13. I saw John one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And we're going we gonna to get into this. This is real good. And his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast, after the wild animal, the way it was looking. You see how it, it was looking and they wondered after that. Now, when it said wounded, it means it was a fatal wound. It was a process. He was in the process of dying. When you have a fatal wound, you are in the process of dying unless you get help. You in a, And then when you get help, you still can be in the process of dying because it's a fatal wound. And it was healed. So this when they said in all the world, in verse three, wonder, when he said wonder, they was astonished. They were amazed. They were marveled after uh, his, this thing, greatly surprised because the world in the future is definitely as intelligent folks like we are today. We understand when it's a fatal wound, the chances of living is, is very uh, low. 
the percentage is low. But this beast, this wild animal, survived it. And they wondered after the beast. And listen what they said after this happened. So it really messed up the human minds in the world in this book of Revelation. This is what's going to happen. And they worship the dragon, the Satan, the old serpent. That's what they said dragon's name and Satan, which gave power unto the beast. He gave his, he gave his power. He gave his seat. Yes, I remember that. And they worship him, kiss towards him like they do uh, the Lord God in Jesus, so to say, if you will. And they worship the beast saying, listen what they said. Who is like unto the beast, this wild animal? Who is able to make war with him? Two rhetorical questions. These are rhetorical questions. These are not questions for anybody to answer. You know how some people give you rhetorical questions? And they'll tell you that too. I say, okay. So it was trying, to, it was making a point. That's what it was. In both of the questions, they were making a point. They were letting you know the people like, you know, nobody can stand against them. It can stand against it or against them. So you can see that it doesn't matter if you have political power. This, the Satan and the beast or his beasts, they're going to have power. That's above your political power. Mm -hmm. And that's in all the world. Yes, that's what's going to happen. Let's go to verse 5, of five of the um, chapter 13, the book of cha uh, Revelation chapter 13. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemes and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. That's how the King James speak. You mean 42 months. That's why I was saying uh, certain words and it sound like I was saying it wrong, but I, I, I'm going to clarify that right now as we move on. And I was just fixing my tongue to say it. So um, this is showing the Antichrist for sure, the beast. He's the Antichrist for sure. And it's Showing its authority and how he can persuade and deceive people to go his way. And that's how you gain power, through powerful speeches. And saying things that people want to hear, too. Let me tell you about that. We're moving along. We're going to get to that part. Because this is the problem. The devil, the thief came to what the uh, King James uh, John and 10 said, the thief cometh, or it means comes. The thief comes not, I'm saying in regular English, the thief comes not, but for to steal. And what it means by steal, it doesn't mean that, you know, you, you, I mean, in the natural, you ain't gonna let nobody steal anything from it. Well, it was going to be so persuasive and so compulsive and ear it's going to be irresistible that's what compulsive is to steal you away some things that you like and it's going to be able to steal a lot of the people away it's some things that people can you know it's impossible for you to say no but you if you line up with the word, you really have to say no. And you really have to resist the devil. And he will flee. Let me tell you about that. When I first got born again in my 20s, wow, 
the devil offered me things six figures. Not only did he offer me that, but he stood there for many years saying the same thing every day to me while I was making those pennies at the job, at this job. In California, in Beverly Hills, six figures, way over the amount that I ever, no, I won't say I never made, Bless the Lord, because the Lord will bless you to make six figures and more if you seek him first and you don't get so caught up in to how much you make and you don't do things unethical and wrong to get it because some people are getting caught today. If you look in the news, you'll find that some of the people in the pharmaceutical company and all form of education, especially health education, people are being caught. People are getting their um, license and put in jail, arrested. So you don't want to get to, if you like that now, some people believe that people are like that now succumb to the devil will do it in the future, in the end times. So you don't want to be like that because he just comes to, to, to uh, steal and then he becomes comes to kill, to slaughter you, kill you, and yeah, and to destroy you, to waste you away when you're nothing. Oh yeah. So you have to read those things because Jesus said, and I believe in the 14th chapter of John 6, and you can read 7, verse 7 as well. It said, Jesus said, Said, I'm gonna say it in regular English. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the way, not a way, the truth in the life. It's just in my mind, it's, it's always in my heart. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. And you have, and it said in verse seven, if ye, if you have known me, you should have known my father also and from henceforth that's what it speaks for now on from the, henceforth ye know you know him and have seen him mm -hmm. so just leaving that right there the enemy will try to take you out through your desires verse 7 chapter 13 it was given unto him to make war with the saints, the set apart, the separated, the holies, yeah, holy people, and to overcome them, to be, be victorious over them. And power was given him, that's how it talks, over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Doesn't matter where you came from what part of the life you're doing, whatever you're doing, what how you look, short, tall, missing some parts or whatever through wars or whatever, it's it's coming after you. You're going to have power over all these people. So the evil, evil power, power and not only just power, but it's the evil power. It has nothing to do with the Lord God. Verse 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Look at the ones that's going to worship him. Keep an eye on what I'm about to say in verse 8 in chapter 13. And all that dwell that live upon the earth shall, guarantee, guarantee, worship him. Whose, why? How's this about? How's this possible? L listen why. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Those that don't are not in the book of life are automatically going to uh, worship him. And if your name is not, is not written in the book of life, you're done sitting. 
You don't want that to happen. That's why you need people need to be born again in this era of time for sure. You need to repent and receive his spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. And people baptized, he said, for the remission of sin, for the blotting away of sin. So for means purpose. So you're not doing it for nothing. You're not just going down for nothing. And you're going down in his name. You're not saying only the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. No. You're saying it in his name. When you go to the bank, you do not say your titles. I'm a father. I have a spirit. And I, you know, I am a son too. Write that down on your check, on your paper, your blank check, and you will not get anything. It has to be in your name and it has to be correct in your name. Let's go to, we still don't know, we're going to move on. Verse 9, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Whew. Heavy stuff right there. If anyone, the Greek transliteration says, if anyone, anyone. So, and it's not talking about a male only human being if anyone have an ear and you know what that means you got an ear but you may not can hear of if you have anyone anyone has have an ear hearing you hear you hear it like you're hearing me now let him hear now we have it in the caption so you you actually are reading in the you and it's like a hearing for you. Let him hear. Let him hearken unto what the Lord is saying. Let him pay attention to what is being said. The Lord is calling on people. The Lord is knocking on the door figuratively and folks door. When people say it's not a God, that's a fool right there. They say uh, the, there isn't a God. There is not a God. That's a fool. Don't listen to fools. Verse 10. He that leadeth, or he, the King James said that. I told you sound. I have to put my tongue that way. He that leads into captivity. Oh my God. This is chapter 13, verses 10. He that leadeth or leads in captivity shall guarantee go into captivity itself. Let's move on to that. And it goes on in this after the semicolon. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Now we're gonna stop and go there. So if you put me, if I'm in prison, I get led into prison, you also gonna be led in the prison of war. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he that killeth or kills with the sword, slaughter people, must be, it's must be meaning it's only fitted that the one that kills by the sword be killed with the sword as well. With a uh, fighting weapon or whatever you do, war. Yeah. And here is the patient. And that's the verse 10. We're still in verse 10. Here is the patient. It didn't say it didn't say in here, but it said, here is the patient in the faith of the saints, the separated, the holy, the uh, people of God. Yeah. Christians, believers. It said, here is the is the patient. That means an endurance. And when we look at the endurance, we mean the power of to endure unpleasant difficulties or difficulties of the process and process. Unpleasant. We endure and we are continuous into, uh, we have that remaining mind to do the Lord, to stick with the Lord. Even in the early churches, some of them did as well. 
and they over they overcame. Yeah. And they're going to be some of those people in the early church is going to be written in the book of life. Yes. How do you say already written? <laughs> so they so that word, it says, let me break it down in the Greek. The Greek says that word patient mean and most people in the health field and know exactly what I'm about to say. Hypo. So we constantly in the Greek hypo. That's the prefix of the word uh, hoopoo. And I'm going to make sure I pronounce that right. Hoopoo. Hoopoo. Hopo is hypo, which is the prefix meaning under. In the word, uh, they call it mone. Hopo mone. That's the Greek term. Meaning that other part means to stay under. The whole thing means to stay, but the other part means to under, to stay under. So, so what do that means to us that they, they endured that? They stuck with it. Let's go on. Pretty good stuff. So in the uh, world, we would call it, and people would call it karma. <laughs> when they said, you lead in captivity, shall go into captivity. You kill, you should be, should be uh, what? Must be killed uh, with the sword. Yes. But we, we don't say karma as Christians. But we know that term. Because it can mean a lot different than what we are saying in the Bible. So we have to be careful with that. In verse um, 11, chapter 13, And I, 